Do you have a rocket like this one here where the paint finish is less than optimal and you want to restore it to something that's showroom new again? That's what I'm going to cover in this video. Welcome to Advanced Construction Videos, where we show you how to tackle rocketry building techniques and more. On our website, we sell kits, motors, building supplies, and electronics. So come and learn, shop, build, and fly when you visit us at apogeerockets.com. Okay, I'm back. Um, I have sanded this down, and as you can see, I took off more than I had originally thought. Um, the bottom side, this was the bot, no, this was the bottom side. This was all green right in here. This was silver tube. Um, I had a green fin on the top. Um, the more I got into it, um, I realized it wasn't up to my standards. I wanted it to look nicer. Um, I wanted this line right here to be nice and straight before it was kind of crooked. Uh, I wanted that paint run out. And that was off here. I wanted that gone. Um, the green paint was a nightmare getting off. Um, it was really gummy. This white paint um, is a urethane paint. It's like an automotive paint. It's a two-part and it's a chemical cure. So when it cures, it was really hard. And in fact, it didn't want to come off, um, but that's perfectly fine because um, it's nice and smooth. I just sanded the the shine off of it, I'm down to a dull, and I think I can use it that way. But the green paint all had to come off. It's That green paint was a nightmare. Um, just like I said, it was really gummy. It took a long time to take off. Um, I did do some damage, which I kind of anticipated. And there was some damage on here already, like this exposed balsa wood that was there before. Um, I also chipped some of the paint here and here um, and so that has to be fixed next. And to do that, I'm going to use um, thin super glue because basically I've got to seal the wood so that I can put a filler on top of it. And so the, uh, the, the sealer I'm using is super glue. So, and I'm going to use water thin super glue. So it's like liquid water here. So you got to wear your safety glasses when you use this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take thin super glue and I'm going to paint that exposed wood and then I'm going to wipe it off and that's going to seal it. Now it's going to be very rough at this point and I'm going to have to sand that down again and I also got to get on this side of the fin. And then along anywhere where I've got exposed wood. If you try to paint over this, that exposed wood is going to act like a sponge. And it's like painting a sponge. And I can, you can just imagine trying to paint a sponge. Um, you just usually you're going to put layer after layer and layer on, and it's going to be sucked in to the sponge. And that's not good. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, finish sealing these this exposed wood and then I'm going to do some more sanding and then I'll be back. Okay all the wood has been sealed. The next thing is where that wood is it's a low spot and I need to fill it so that the surface is smooth and for that I'm going to use some uh, spot glazing putty. Uh, it's glazing and spot putty. This is used in the automotive industry to fill uh, little defects in cars when they're doing uh, paint. Um, and it's uh, got an odor to it. You can also use the, um, the Elmer's Carpenter's wood filler if you're using this with kids. Uh, that's water soluble. This has petroleum in it and it has some strong odor to it. And you don't really want kids to be drinking or uh, sniffing it. Um, so I took a little bit on a razor blade and I'm going to go along my edges and try to you know, leave a thin film on those edges. Uh, and then this is going to dry by evaporation and 
And then I'm going to do some more sanding. So you can see, I'm kind of, probably can't see that because it's probably out of the camera view. So let me do this one here. So again, it's, I took some on there and I'm just going to smooth it across any of those low spots. And I'm probably going to put too much on there, which is fine. Um, the nice thing about this stuff is in the carpenter's wood filler is it sands really easy. It's really dusty. Um, it doesn't take a lot of effort to sand it smooth. So I'm going to put it on this fin as well. You can see this one corner right here. Uh, it's been rounded off and it would be nicer if that was nice and square. So I'm gonna try to get a little bit build up there. Um, it, you know, like a bump and then like I'll sand it off later and try to make that edge nice and square. Um, normally on fins, you round the edges to make the rocket fly faster and higher. Um, on this particular kit, I know it's got a silver leading edge. So that's it's easier to mask that off and paint it if it's nice and square. So that's why I want it square on this particular rocket. But on a normal rocket, yes, go ahead, round off the edges. Um, it'll make it fly nicer, but this is not a high performance rocket, so I can get away with that. All right, so I'm going to do that, um, and then uh, before I sand it off, I'll, I'll come back so you can see what it looks like when it's all blotchy. <laughs> At this point, all of our spot putty is hard, and I can now sand it off. Now, it's also brittle, so like any time you have a big glob, um, I'm trying to find a big glob, right here, you could actually just snap it off. But when you do, you could also take off part that you don't want to take off. So whenever you're using this stuff, you have to sand it off. Don't try to chip it off those little, those big bumps. Just knock them off with sandpaper. Uh, my goal here is this front edge. I want this corner to be nice and sharp. And the reason is, when I go to mask it off, because it has a silver leading edge where the rest of it is green and white. And then on this side, it's also green. So um, I want a sharp edge on there. So I'm gonna start by lightly sanding and then um, take it down a little bit more until I get it nice and flat. Um, this is gonna give me a problem in there because I'm not gonna be able to get in really tight along that edge. So for that, I got a flat file so I can get in there, get that edge as tight as possible. So uh, that's the process. Um, I'm gonna sand it down um, and then I'll come back before we start doing the painting, which is the next step after this. At this stage, I have sanded off the uh, spot filler putty. You can see I've filled in that low spot where where the sanding dowel was used before. Um, my edge looks pretty good. It doesn't look good at this point as far as aesthetically, but the edges look sharp, uh, which is what I'm worried about. Um, the only spots that I think I need to come back and do some more spot putty on are in this corner right here. Um, and the reason I can tell is that um, when you sand it, it kind of changes the color. So the color is a little bit lighter. On these corners right here, um, it's a little dark, which means that it that's a low spot. I didn't get the sand down into it. So that little corner right there is where I'm gonna put on a little bit more putty. Um, and also I think right here where the uh, leading edge meets the body tube. To me, it looks like there's a little divot like there. So I'll just put in a little bit more right there. Now the nice stuff, 
thing about this stuff is that it, it um, dries very fast. So probably within a half hour, I'm gonna put on a coat of primer. When I put the primer on, it's gonna be very light. The reason is I'm putting it on top of paint. And sometimes, as you know, you can get those paint incompatibility problems and you get the crazing, like what happened up here on this edge. So you want to put it on light so that there's not a lot of solvents in it. And so those solvents in the paint evaporate really fast so that it doesn't have a chance to um, sink down to the paint below and start attacking the paint below. So I want to build up a layer very slow. So it's going to be several light coats of primer first. So I get a nice even coat over the entire rocket. And at that point, I can actually see any extra blemishes that I need to sand out. And I'm going to choose a sandable primer so that when I do sand, um, as I remove the paint, I'm smoothing out the surface and removing the low spots by getting rid of the high spots. Um, so that's my process. So the next time we see it, I should be primed and uh, we'll see where it goes from there.